Hey everybody, welcome back to The Third Degree. I'm Sid Rosenberg, a very special guest again today, one of my dear friends, my former radio co-host and a terrific football player for the Penn State Nittany Lions and one of the greatest wide receivers in the history of the Miami Dolphins, the great number 81, O.J. McDuffie. O.J., how are you, pal? What's going on, Big Sid? Good, Good to see you, see my you. man. Good to see you, too, O.J., of course, also a frequent guest on the Sid Rosenberg Radio Show, 8 o'clock every Monday morning. Let's start with your former team, the Dolphins. Big game on Sunday, taking on San Francisco, a game the Dolphins had to have. Came out impressively early offensively for the third straight week. The defense totally shuts down the opposition. Miami finds themselves at 9-5. and five. Quite a story. Very much so. A team that won one game last year and come back this year and uh, to improve by eight games so far with two remaining. Uh, it's been very impressive. And like you said, defense has been doing it for us. Offense has been playing well enough to win games and not losing games for us lately. Would you agree then as a guy that was one of Dan Marino's favorite targets that Chad Pennington is the next best quarterback since? I believe so. I mean, you got, you got a guy that's got a proven track record. has been a winner ever since he's been in the league. One of the highest passive percentage ratings uh, in the game of football. And, you know, like you said, he goes out there and he manages the games. And a lot of quarterbacks go out there and lose games for your team. Chad is not a guy like that. Is he the one guy, when you look at this turnaround, OJ, as you said, going from one win to nine wins with games against Kansas City and the Jets uh, still out there, is he the guy that's most responsible? Or would you give it to Tony Sperano? Would you give it to Bill Parcells? Who's the guy that gets the most credit? Well, you got to give it to all of them. you got, you got to give it to start off with Parcells for actually bringing him in. You know, the day he was cut, I think the Dolphins were eager to get him down here. And then you look at Sperano and, and, and Dan Henning putting him in the proper position to make plays and not hurt his team. And then you got to give it to Chad for actually going out there and executing the offense, getting the ball to the right guys. We got a lot of good weapons on that team. You know, we're not a great team offensively, but we got a lot, a lot of good guys that can make things happen on that team. And defensively, you have been great. Now, you know, you make a very good point, OJ. Think about this. If the Jets don't go out there and get Brett Favre and they keep Chad Pennington, maybe Josh McCown is the quarterback for the Dolphins <laughs> this year. And I'm telling you, they're not going to be 9-5 and five if Josh is a quarterback. I don't think so either. I think Josh is more of a risk taker, and he's going to want and demand the ball in his hands yeah. in critical situations where you know your money's made with guys like Ronnie Ronnie Brown and Ricky Williams. So Chad understands that. He delivers the ball to the right guys, and then when it's time for him to make a play, he does. All right, now the uh, Dolphins could have very easily had a one-game lead over the New York football Jets. The Jets came out like gangbusters, went up 14-3 to early on Buffalo. Every time I put that game back on, Buffalo was back in the game and had a chance to literally run out the clock with a lead late in that game and for some reason decided to throw the football on a second and five. How horrible a coaching decision was that? I think it's terrible when you got a guy like Marshawn Lynch on your team and you got a team that, you know, does a great job of running the ball late in the game, up with a little over two minutes to go, run the clock out. Even if you don't achieve a first down or anything, make the Jets use all their timeouts, punt it away, and then play defense. I cannot imagine putting the ball in J.P. Lozman's hands in, a, in a, an attempt to run the clock out. It's just a bad decision all around. Very bad decision, and you're right. Marshawn Lynch and Jackson had carved up that Jet defense. They were getting seven yards of carry. Yeah. Odds are they keep that ball on the ground. Jets use their timeouts, and Buffalo gets a win. The Dolphins have a one-game lead. How about that? Yeah. Um, you know, that's it's sad. Now, the Dolphins next week, of course, uh, will take on Kansas City in Kansas City. The Jets are in Seattle. The Chiefs have only won two games this year. Seattle's playing better. They've only won three games this year. Assuming both teams take care of business, that sets up a monster matchup in East Rutherford in two weeks between the Dolphins or the Jets, and the Jets, I should say, maybe for the AFC East. How about that matchup? Oh, it's going to be great. You know, like you say, both teams have the tender their knittings first. Going out to Kansas City and the weather for the Dolphins could be difficult. They had a tough loss to San Diego this past weekend. Uh, the Jets have been rough on the West Coast, so hopefully they go out there and struggle again on the West Coast against the Seattle team. There's going to be, could be some element problems out there. Uh, Brett, hasn't, Brett, Brett hasn't played well lately. Hopefully that continues for a Dolphin like myself. <laughs> but I would love for that January 28th game to be the deciding factor on which team wins the AFC East. I agree. Now, nobody's talking about the Patriots, so they went out to Oakland and took care of business on Sunday, and Matt Castle who lost his father earlier in the week. We felt bad about that, yeah, obviously. Definitely. Went out there, had a monster, monster effort. They're also 9-5. and five. Are people sleeping on the Patriots? Uh, they really are, and the Patriots are loving it. They're loving to talk about the Jets and the Dolphins and what's going on in that matchup, and they're talking about that last game. Imagine if one of these teams, you know, Jets or Dolphins, lose a game, Patriots went out, and nobody even talked about them. They right. end up winning the division at 11-5. That could absolutely happen. Again, talking here to one of the all-time greats, Penn State player, Miami Dolphin player, O.J. McDuffie. Now, the Steelers get a very controversial victory, a touchdown call that may have not been a touchdown, but regardless, it would have been fourth down inside the one. I have right. a feeling what this probably gets it in any way. At the very least, the Steelers kick a field goal and tie the game. So I think people are making a much bigger deal out of that blown call yesterday than there should be. But regardless now, Pittsburgh and the driver's seat juice, if they win in Tennessee against your former buddy, Kerry Collins, they would get the one seed inside the AFC. Do you think the Steelers get that win this week? I believe they do. I believe Tennessee's searching again, man. You imagine a team that was looking at being undefeated through 11 or 12 weeks. Now they're looking just to hold on to the number one seed in the AFC. They came out, you know, they've, they've been struggling a little bit. They put the ball in Kerry's hands this last week, and it didn't work out. The running back's still running well. 
But, you know, Kerry had carried him a little bit at times when they needed him to. But Pittsburgh's just playing a great defense. Not spectacular offense, but they're playing Pittsburgh Steelers type of football. They are. Great defense. And Walter has found a way to win games. He won a Super Bowl like that. Yeah, so, he did, so he's a dangerous guy. Now, the Dolphins, if they don't beat the Jets and win that division outright in a couple of weeks, still the wild card is a big possibility. But yet, right now you've got the Indianapolis Colts playing great football. Uh, they're going to go to the playoffs. And even with the Raven loss to Pittsburgh, the Ravens have Dallas coming up in the NFL Network on Saturday night. If they can win that football game, now you've got to worry about the Ravens and the Colts for the wild card spot. Right. Now, that's a, that's the thing that's going to be tough on the, on the, on the Dolphins because, for one, you look at all the tiebreakers, the Ravens are beating us head-to-head. -head. Uh, within the conference, they've, they've, we've, we, our record isn't as good as theirs. So I think the only chance the Dolphins have of getting in this thing is to win the division and then, you know, and hope from, you know, from there. But the winning the division, I think, is the only option right now for the Dolphins. Got to talk to you about the wide receiver position, something you excelled at for so many years in college and in the pros. The Texans are 7-7. Seven and seven. I think it's a very disappointing season. I think they've got talent to be a 10-win team yes. in the playoffs. Do you agree at this point right now, OJ, that Andre Johnson is the best wide receiver in the NFL? He is a beast, and he's in a market where you don't even know how, how talented he is. He is um, unbelievable. And, you know, whenever your teams get a chance to play him, like the Dolphins had a chance to play him, then you really realize yeah. how good this guy is because you don't get to see a lot of snaps. You see a lot of highlights, but you don't get to see a lot of snaps because he's in Houston. But Andre, you talk about a guy that's fast, strong, great hands, and, you know, and he's, and he's a good guy. Yeah. He's a guy you like to see succeed. So, you know, all the talent, all the skills are there, and he's definitely a top two or three receivers in the league. Yeah, and you're right. He's a good guy. He's not one of those loudmouth guys, right. which, you know, and, you know, it's kind of funny to watch Dallas beat up on the Giants on Sunday night, which I wasn't happy about, but, <laughs> but I'm not going to lie to you. I was a little surprised when T.O. came out of that, that tunnel, and he was booed loudly yeah. by Dallas. I mean, the Cowboy fans are booing T.O. now. Yeah. yeah. How about you, that? Well, you know what, man? They, they know what's up, man. you got to always support your quarterback for one. Uh, even as a wide receiver, you got to take your quarterback out to dinner, bring him lunch, you know, right. bring him breakfast, you know, <laughs> donuts in the morning. You got to massage your quarterbacks. They have bigger egos than anybody. Now, everybody's going to talk about these wide receiver divas, and a lot of fans aren't feeling that. You yep. know, the Chad, Chad Johnson in Cincinnati, everybody's tired of that distraction. T.O. in Dallas, they're tired of that distraction. So, you know, even his first drop ball, they booed him well, some they more. They booed him pretty so, loudly. Yeah, it's yeah. good. T.O. Yeah. needs to just calm down, man, and go out there and play. He drops a lot of balls. He does. You know, he a couple a years ago, he led the league in drops, but he had the bad hand injury, right. and people were blaming that on his hand. He always leads a league in drops. He puts up great numbers. He's a terrific wide receiver. John Madden said Sunday night, just play the game and shut up. But now you're talking about a guy that's thrown Jeff Garcia, Donovan McNabb, and Tony Romo under the bus. And, and I know now they're making Ed Water out to be the bad guy at ESPN, <laughs> but the fact is wherever T.O. goes, the quarterback is never good enough. You know what, though? You've seen it, though. You, you don't have to use Ed Water as, as, as a reference. You see him on the sideline going off on his quarterback, right. going off on his coordinators. You know, T.O. has just been a bad egg, but you know what you get when you bring a guy like that in there. Fair enough. You know, no. if he's going to make a couple plays, but, you know, otherwise, you know, he's, he's going to be a distraction. You. He's going to hurt you. Now, let me ask you about the, uh, the Giants here. The Giants win the Super Bowl last year. Off to an 11-1 start this year. They have played the last couple of weeks without Plaxico Burris. That's true. But not enough people talking about playing without Brandon Jacobs. Right. Over 1,000 yards. They've lost to Philly and Dallas the last two weeks. A huge matchup, O.J., against Carolina on Sunday night for the number one seed inside the NFC Brandon Jacobs should be back. If you're a Giant fan, do you worry now or wait till after the Carolina game? Well, you want to get this game. This is a big game. This is a game that will determine a lot. And like you say, it's playing for a huge position in the playoffs. And you want to be rolling. You, don't, you want to be rolling going into the playoffs. These next couple of games are critical for every team that have playoffs, playoff aspirations or that are already in the playoffs. And so I think getting Brandon back, which is what they do best. You know, you, Eli's been playing some decent football this year. But when you got that banger in Brandon Jacobs, being yep. able to run the clock out and, and hold the ball for, you know, 10 minutes a quarter, that's what's, in, what's important this time yeah, of year. We, no, no doubt the Giants miss him desperately. So on the way out here, two teams vying for these three spots for the wild card. Okay, let's go with Dallas. Let's go with Atlanta. Let's go with Tampa Bay. Of those uh, three teams, who do you like the two teams to make it? Well, I think, I think Dallas gets in, unfortunately. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think Dallas gets in. <laughs> And I would love to see that, that young Atlanta team get in, too, so man. There would be a lot of fun to watch. I'd love to see Ryan get a chance in his, in his rookie season in the playoffs. Both guys right now, Ryan in Atlanta, Joe Flacco in Baltimore, kind of right there yes, for there. those last wild card spots. OJ, as always, it's great to talk to no you. No doubt. See you. Thank you, brother. You're welcome, man. A great wide receiver for the Penn State Nittany Lions and one of the greatest Miami Dolphin players of all time. In fact, led the league in receptions one year with got 91, got more lucky. than Frankie Sanders. Got lucky one time. The great number 81, O.J. McDuffie. That'll do it for this edition of The Third Degree, but of course, keep it right here at opensports.com, where the future of sports on the web is open. We'll see you next time. For more great videos, check back every day on opensports.com.